name's Sandy, 28 years old. My husband Morgan and I got married a year ago through an office romance. We met when he was in charge of training new hires. I had just moved from a different industry and had no idea what I was doing at my new job. He kindly and patiently trained me. I think it didn't take me long to fall for him. When the training was over and I had learned most of the work, I invited him out to dinner to thank him for all the help he had given me. After that, we continued to see each other several times outside of work, and I took the plunge and confessed my feelings to him. We were both around an age where we were thinking about getting married. So about two years after we started dating, we met each other's family. We had smooth sailing into our marriage after that. One of the common issues of marriage I often hear is a relationship with in-laws, but I haven't encountered such problems so far. My in-laws have been very good to me. We are so glad to have you as a daughter-in-law. You are too good for my son. I agree. I envy my son to have such a beautiful lady for wife. Oh, you guys are so sweet. Thank you. When Noor and I occasionally visit them, they give me such compliments and make me feel loved. I may be simple-minded, but I don't feel bad about being praised. If you force me to come up with an issue, it would be about where we live. Right now, we live in a rented apartment. If we were to start a family, it would be too small. I suppose we could move when we have a baby, but after the baby is born, things are going to get a little hectic. I agree. I think it's a good idea to buy a house beforehand. Now? Isn't that a little too early? You think so? You said you dreamed of gardening in your own yard, right? I'd rather have a house than an apartment. It's a good opportunity for us. We both work, so if we don't splurge, we can probably get a loan for a reasonable amount. Now that he mentions it, a new house sounds certainly nice. Once I get the idea, I'll start visiting real estate agencies with Morgan on weekends. My parents are very supportive of the idea and are helping us find a house and giving us advice on mortgage and property contracts. One day, we are asked to come to my parents' house for a talk. We head out, wondering what it's about. There, I find my grandfather. He has been living alone since my grandmother passed away a few years ago. Because of his age, my parents have been asking him to move in with them, but he hasn't accepted the offer yet. I don't know what his true motive is, but he may not want to let go of the house filled with memories of late grandmother. I heard that you are looking for a house. Yeah, but we haven't been able to find the one that fits our criteria. If you want, you can use the land I have left and build the house on it. You don't have to pay for the land, and you can put the money toward the house. Are you sure about that? Yes, I'm sure. I'd be happy to let you guys use it. Thank you, Grandpa. He's not a rich man. It's just that his family has been farmers for generations and owns a lot of unused lands. He has offered us one of the lots, which is in his name. On top of it, my parents have proposed to cover part of the construction cost. Our plan is turning into reality. Over the next few weeks, we discuss specifics with a contractor. Then I receive a call from my mother-in-law one day. I heard you are building your own home. Oh yes, my grandfather is letting us use his land. Oh, I see. You know, if you are building a new house, why don't we live together? You mean, you, Jacob, and us? Listen, our house is getting old, you know. If we want to keep living here, it will need a major renovation. We've been thinking about what to do. But if you guys are going to build a house, we can kill two birds with one stone. Now we won't have to pay for the renovation. 
What on earth is she thinking? It is true that their house is getting old, so the story about renovation may be true. But it's not like the house is dilapidated and needs to be torn down right now. Above all, I don't understand why they have to move in with us. As I'm stunned by this unexpected and sudden turn of events, Morgan, who has been listening to the conversation next to me, takes over the phone. Hey, Mom, what are you talking about? Moving in together all of a sudden? What we're thinking right now is a home for us as a family. What? You're saying we aren't family? No, no one is saying that. Even if we move in together, it doesn't mean we expect you to take care of us. It's rather the opposite. You're both working, right? If I'm there, I can reduce the burden of housework a lot. That might be true, but. And you are our eldest son. Sooner or later, you will have to take care of us. It's no more, isn't it? Then. When you're going to build a house, you should think about living together, right? Hmm, but. Adele has been good to me up to now. I honestly don't like her idea, but I can't be too harsh on her. Morgan, who is last resort, has a strong sense of responsibility. He seems to be completely taken in by her. In the end. I'm sorry, I should have said no. I mean, I shouldn't have told my mom about it in the first place. No, it's not your fault. Besides, she agreed to pay the rest of the cost. We agreed with her when she promised to pay for half of the construction cost with the money from the sale of the house. Reluctantly. I didn't expect it to happen so soon. Morgan has told me before that when they reach an age, where their health becomes a concern, he is thinking about living together. When it happens, I thought I would just accept it quietly. It's too soon and so sudden. But now that I've agreed to it, I can go back to her and say I changed my mind. If she really helps me with the housework, it will indeed reduce my burden. Maybe it's not all bad. It's a shame that I will have less private time with Morgan, but I try my best to think that there are some advantages to living together. I have no choice but to do so. I'd like it to be all electric. We will install a solar power generator. A dishwasher is essential in the kitchen. I want a jacuzzi in the backyard. From then on, Adele interfered with our plans with more demands than we originally had in mind. She even changed the floor plan and facilities, so the price exceeded our plan by a large margin. Now that the house is ready, she still hasn't paid us the money she had promised. Well, Adele, we have to pay the contractor. What's going on with your promise? Oh, that! It seems that they are late in transferring the money for the sale of the house. Can you pay for it first? I will pay you back later. No way, I can't do that. What do you mean? You are both making money, so you have plenty, don't you? I had Morgan urge her several times to pay the money, but my in-laws never paid when it was due. I ended up having to beg my parents for a loan. My in-laws promised to cover the shortfall in construction cost, so we did not apply for a mortgage. Even though both of us have been working, we haven't been able to save that much money in such a short time. There was no way to cover for my in-laws as easily as Adele thought. We promised my parents that we would pay them back as soon as my in-laws paid us. Whoa, it turned out nicer than I thought it would. Don't you think so? I do. The in-laws look at the completed house from the outside and are very pleased with it. As soon as they get a set of keys, they move in right away. Jacob, who has somewhat more common sense than Adele, seems to have some thought on the matter. But he's too meek to say anything. Adele invites her friends to the house and throws a homewarming party every day like she's the owner. 
What do you think? Isn't it amazing? It may be a little cramped for two families, but it has a big yard. I'm thinking of starting a vegetable garden here. Isn't it nice? She boasts to her friends. While we have been busy with work, we managed to get everything ready for the move. By the time we finally move into our new home, it's already been set up in her taste. I've been imagining in my head how I would decorate each room, but her furniture has already been placed as if it's a matter of fact. The yard, which I have planned to use for my hobby, has also been converted into a vegetable garden by her. She's doing whatever she pleases, yet, she hasn't paid me the money after three months. On top of it all, she dares to tell me something outrageous. I knew she was an insane person, but still. She doesn't ask, but tells us that my sister in law Janice, who is now a divorced single mother, will move in with us. What on earth are you talking about? I've never been consulted. Shut up! I want to live with my grandchildren, so you get out of this house. What the hell? This is our house to begin with. Why should we leave? You two are working, right? Then it's easier for you to do whatever you want. She's a struggling single mother with small children. That has nothing to do with us. Give me a break. It's supposed to be our home. My in laws forced their way in. And now, they tell us to leave because we are getting in the way. There is no way we let them keep having their way. Even Morgan is furious at the selfishness. A family meeting is held, including his sister, who has returned to the family. Dad, please put some sense into mom. This is crazy. Well, I don't know what to say. It's a decision. He is wrapped around by her little finger and has no intention of helping his own son. There is no point in blaming dad. I mean, it's not such a big deal, isn't it? You guys don't have kids. You can still do whatever you want if you leave this house. Johnny Stu tries to kick us out for selfish reasons. As for Adele, I don't know what's so funny, but she has been grinning at us. I'm not pleased with it at all, so I speak to my family about it. My grandfather is even angrier than we are. What a bunch of jerks! I allowed you to use the land! When he learns what has been going on, he makes a proposal to us. After much discussion with him, my parents, and of course Morgan, we've decided to go ahead with the plan. Three weeks later, we are ready to act upon it. We are taking advantage of the opportunity, while Janice and her children, who moved in earlier, went on a day trip with my in-laws. So, do you want me to move everything out? Yes, every single thing, please. I instruct the movers to remove all of my in-laws' belongings, including ours. A short time after two trucks with our belongings leave, my in-laws return home in good spirits. As Morgan and I are waiting for them in the living room, they notice something unusual and come yelling at us in panic. What's going on? What happened to our stuff? They were in our way, so while you were enjoying your outing, we asked a mover to remove them. How selfish of you! While I fend off Adele, Janice was yelling at Morgan. Not only are my things gone, but all my kids' stuff too. What do you have gained from doing this? Oh, we've decided to rent the house out. New tenants will be moving in in a couple weeks. You never mentioned anything about that. You're crazy. This is terrible. We live here. How can you decide such an important matter without asking us? They protest vehemently when they learn about our plan. We have a thing or two to remind them. Who do you think you are? It was you who decided to let your daughter and her kids move in without asking us. Well, that's true. But you've been acting like you own the house we built. On top of it, you're trying to kick us out. Then Morgan joined in. 
You haven't paid a penny for this house, Mom. What happened to the money you promised? You weren't going to pay from the beginning anyway, were you? No, that's not true. It's the agent fault for not transferring money. The land here is in my grandfather's name. The house is in our name. We don't need your consent to rent it out. The same goes for Janice, who moved in later. Adele looks shaken and pale, while Janice looks angry and red. Their reactions are similar, as you would expect from the mother and daughter, even though the colors are different. Your things are in a rental storage, so you take care of the rest yourselves. Oh no! Morgan tells him coldly, and the two cry out in anguish. What goes around comes around. My parents-in-law, Janice, and her children haven't got sufficient funds and moved into a small apartment together. Three adults and two children in a 900 square feet two-bedroom space. It's a no-brainer that their lives have been downgraded. They are supposedly living a life that makes you feel fed up just imagining it. I hear that Adele and Janice blame each other and argue every day. We have cut all contact with them. I didn't realize who they truly were right after we got married. It's probably a good thing that we could cut them off sooner than later. We are back in living in a rented apartment. The rent on the house is coming into our pockets thanks to my considerate grandfather. You have a lot of things coming up, don't you? Use it for your future. I really appreciate his offer. We are now living in a spacier apartment than before. We have no complaints about my current life, but if we have a baby in the future, I would like to live in my own house again. Of course, it would be just us.